In the first game of this year's I-80 rivalry, Nebraska had strong pitching from right-hander John Keller to outlast Creighton 5-3 in Lincoln. Then in game two, the Big Red used a pair of hits from four different Huskers to beat the Blue Jays 4-1 here in Omaha. Tonight, it's the third game of the series, the Nebraska Classic from the home of the College World Series. NET Sports, Nebraska's home for sports, is live from Omaha's TD Ameritrade Park as the Creighton Blue Jays host the Nebraska Cornhuskers in the Nebraska Classic. Hi again, everybody. Alongside John Bishop, I'm Kevin Kugler. Larry Putney will join us from the field in just a moment. Game three of this series finds two teams coming in in very different directions. For the Creighton Blue Jays, they're on a high. They got their first conference series win this past weekend on the road at Bradley. Meanwhile, for Nebraska, a disappointing series loss to Indiana has put the Huskers on the outside looking in as far as the Big Ten tournament is concerned with two weeks to go in the season. And, John, if they're going to get back into position, they're going to need somebody to lead them. Maybe that's Chad Christensen. Chad Christensen didn't not play in this game the last time we were at TD Ameritrade Park. It's the only game this year that he has not played in. Part of the problem was his bat. The average had slid some 70 or 80 points. The power had completely disappeared. Well, Chad Christensen seems to have responded from that benching. He's come back. The average is starting to come back up, Kevin. And he hit his first two home runs in almost two months in that Indiana series. Well, the Jays offensively has struggled most of the year, but they are getting a little spark at the top now from Chance Ross. Chance Ross is one of the few guys on this very light-hitting Jays team that seems to be coming around. He's hit over 300 over the last calendar month, and despite the fact that he has spent most of the season at the top of the order, he seems to be the Jays' best run producer as of late. He's driven in 11 of his 17 runs over the last three weeks, which is a little unusual coming from the top of the order, but when you're Creighton and you're not scoring many runs, you'll take them wherever you can get them. Oh, there's no question. In fact, Larry Putney is down on the field right now. And Larry, if you're not careful, Ed Service may hand you a bat tonight. Well, I'm not sure I could do any better, though, frankly, Kevin. Missouri Valley Conference, at the bottom of it, is the Creighton Blue Jays, and they've been struggling at the plate all year long. They've been shut out five times this year. That's more than the previous five years combined. They're batting just 229, 40 points lower, lower than any other Ed Service team, but there is a little bit of hope. The Blue Jays on a two-game winning streak after winning a couple this past weekend, a win tonight against Nebraska, that makes it three in a row. Well, that is a winning streak. It's the Huskers and the Blue Jays. The first pitch from TD Ameritrade Park in Omaha is coming up. It's a beautiful night for baseball in Omaha, Nebraska, 63 degrees. Mostly cloudy. I know it says mostly cloudy. I hedged to the partly cloudy side, but that's the optimist in me. Northwest wind, 17 miles an hour, 43% humidity. It's a great night for baseball. Wind blowing out here at TD Ameritrade as well. As we look at the team comparisons, Nebraska and Creighton both feel like they have should have had better seasons at this point. Nebraska's offensively certainly improved from they were, where they were a year ago. The Jays, offensively, that's been the Achilles heel for this Creighton squad this season. The Husker lineup tonight for head coach Darren Erstad. Cale Kaiser will lead things off. Michael Pritchard batting second. Chad Christensen batting third. Cash Kalkowski in the cleanup spot. Josh Shepard batting fifth. Rich Sanguinetti batting sixth. Pat Kelly 
Batting in the seventh spot, Austin Darby. Batting eighth, and Corey Burleson coming off a big game in the second game of the doubleheader at Indiana this past weekend. He will catch and bat ninth. And there's a good look at the left-hander. Take a look because he won't be out there long. That's the Friday starter for the Jays' tie block. And after this inning, Johnny probably won't be out there much longer. No, and this has been a staple of Ed's service over the last couple of years is to put Ty Block out there on the mound for an inning, maybe two, as we saw in the very first matchup between these two teams at Haymarket Park. But Ty Block coming off a pretty solid start. He was outpitched, though, by an Omaha native, Joe Bircher of Bradley, on Friday night in a 4-0 Bradley victory. But Ty Block, his numbers have not been bad this year. 3-5, three 313 on the ERA. He's hoping to get out there, get his three outs, and be done for the night. Our umpires tonight behind the plate, Randy Bruins. Mike Droll is at first. Don Umblin, the umpire, at third tonight. I'll be keeping this one legit between the lines. It's good. Wipe the eyes. Make sure you're ready to go. Defensively for the Blue Jays, it looks like this left to right across the outfield. It'll be McEwen, Gerber, and Murphy from left to right. Ross at third, Staley at short, Peter at second, Judkins at first, Ben Boom behind the plate tonight, and of course, Block on the hill and very rarely does this happen but as the game gets ready to begin block on the hill the bullpen already going for the blue jays koenigstein warming for creighton so that block position you see there will not last long he will be in and out after one inning interesting uh, change in the lineup for nebraska richard stock not getting the start tonight he had a first inning triple two weeks ago in this ballpark but did not fare as well against ty block nebraska this year kevin is four and five in games where Richard Stock has not started. And the first pitch to Kale Kaiser in there for a strike, and we are underway in Omaha, game three of the season series. Nebraska's already won the series, looking for their first sweep since 2008. One and one on Kale Kaiser, who was unbelievably unhappy to see the calendar go from April to May. He raised his average 65 points in the month of April, started the month hitting 200. He had to think that was a horrible April Fool's joke, and he hit 378 in April. But it started May 0 for 9, and soon to be 0 for 10 as he lifts it to Murphy in right, and Murphy with the catch for the first out. John, let's talk keys first for the Huskers. I think the first key is to forget about Sunday. It was a bad day, and they lost both games. Put last weekend behind you, and also don't look ahead to Minnesota. Huge series coming up for the Huskers. Also, take what you want. Nebraska has been fantastic on the base pass. They've been putting the pressure on with steals, taking the extra base on what looks to be singles. They have forced five Creighton errors in two games. And finally, save the gifts for Christmas. Don't walk, don't no hits by pitch. Make Creighton earn it with their bats. Assuming that my Christmas gift that didn't show up last December is here tonight, you brought it with you? I did. It's this nice orange highlighter. <laughs> no, it's not. One and one the count on Michael Pritchard. It's, it's a rare one. Well, that's good. Pritchard's hitting 24 straight games as he chops one to third. It stays fair. Long throw across, and the throw is wild. Pritchard on his way to second. Here comes the throw to second, and Pritchard is out at second base. Great recovery for the Jays and a pinpoint throw by Nick Judkins to gun him down. Pritchard retired at second for the second out. You would not expect this to happen in this ballpark, Kevin, because when you throw wild to a corner base, there's a lot of foul territory. But you get the friendly carom, the friendly carom that came off of the wall. Watch. You're going to get the friendly carom, and then Pritchard makes the mistake of looking back. Slowed him down a step. That was the difference. So Pritchard gets the hit, extends the hitting streak to 25 games. It's ruled a hit, and then he's retired 5-3-4 on the putout. Trying to stretch it into an infield, well, been a hit and an error if he'd been able to get to second base, but instead it's a hit, and he's retired. Well, Nebraska was very good about those little loopers and slow dribblers through the infield in the first matchup between these teams, and they almost got the break of another one. Christensen. Showing nerves of steel to take that pitch. One and two the count on Chad Christensen. Hit his first two home runs this past weekend, as John mentioned, since March 17th. A wave and a miss and a pitch in the dirt. Got away from Ben Broom. He'll have to throw to first, and he does to complete the strikeout. And the side is retired. So an inning that goes with three up and three down, but not without some dramatics. Nebraska gets a hit, does not score. Creighton coming up in Omaha.
Alongside John Bishop and Larry Putney, I'm Kevin Kugler. Scoreless as we head to the bottom of the first at TD Ameritrade Park as Ty Block throws 13 pitches in his half of the first inning. And now he'll send the offense up to try to take their swings at Nebraska's defensive alignment. There's Chance Ross who will lead things off. Brad McEwen batting second. Nick Judkins batting third. Anthony Bemboom in the cleanup spot. Alex Staley batting in the number five hole. Mike Gerber batting sixth. Scott Thornburg batting seventh, the DH tonight. Jake Peter, the second baseman, batting eighth. And Brendan Murphy gets the nod in right field. He is batting ninth. And all of those batters will go to work against right-handed pitcher Tom Lemke, John. Tom Lemke has made one appearance since his last start. His last start came a month ago against the Iowa Hawkeyes. He did make a weekend appearance through an inning of shutout baseball against Indiana. Lemke's story has been well documented. Larry will tell us a little bit more about it later in the broadcast. The blood clots fighting back from offseason surgery, trying to bring him back slowly and uh, nurse him back to health. Defensively behind Lemke, Kaiser, Sanguinetti at Darby from left to right across the outfield. Shepherds at third, Christensen at short, Kelly at second, Kalkowski at first, Burleson behind the plate, and Tom Lemke. Eighth start of the season tonight on the Hill, making a second career start against the Jays. He started the very first game ever played at TD Ameritrade Park last year and also against Ty Block. He went three and two thirds, struggled a little bit, and you'll remember that was the game that everybody thought was the coming out party for Logan Ehlers of Nebraska. He then left the program at the end of the season. One ball, one strike on Chance Ross. Hitting 285 on the year, two for eight against Nebraska on the season. The 1-1 one -one to Ross and a wave and a miss, one and two. Ross, second pitch of the game on Saturday he saw from Bradley. He took out of the ballpark for just his second home run of the year. Later contributed with a big RBI double in a four-run ninth inning. Two balls, two strikes on Chance Ross. Senior out of Park Hill, Oklahoma. 2-11 in his career against Nebraska. The leadoff man here tonight for the Jays. 2-2 from Lemke. Fastball, strike three called. Ross is out on strikes for the first out. And John, the keys for the Jays in this one. Well, it's time to match Nebraska step for step, and maybe they got a break in the last half inning. Nebraska has outstolen Creighton 5-1. to one. They've also been very good at taking the extra base on base hits. Also, treat every inning like the last. The pitchers aren't going to be asked to go more than an inning or two tonight. This is your last chance against Nebraska this year. Treat it as such. And finally, don't forget who you are. You're a pitching and defense team first. The offense, eventually, they hope to come around, but make sure you button up the defense. Five errors in this series by Creighton. First pitch to McEwen is lifted into right center field. Sanguinetti is there, fights the sun, and he makes the catch for out number two. So Lemke nearly went the distance with Ross before he got the strikeout. McEwen attacks the first pitch, and the sophomore flies out to center for the second out of the first inning. It will be a little bit of a challenge, and you just saw it right there from Sanguinetti. There's just a little bit of Sunfield left out there. We're starting a little later than we had the previous game. So the shade is encompassed probably two-thirds of the field, but a little bit in right center and in deep left field. Still some sunshine to fight off. I think Judkins takes ball one, one and oh the count on the senior out of Lakeville, Minnesota, that the Jays would sorely love to see get hot again in these final two weeks of the season. The 1-0 to Judkins is in there for a strike. He was great in March, hit 351, led the team in hitting in March, but over his last 12 games, hitting 149, seven for 47. At that point, Kevin, he was hitting 342 by far and away the Jays' leading batter, and now he and Chance Ross are virtually tied for the team lead. That batting average has taken a nosedive, and the seven hits he's had in that spell, Kevin, five of them came in two games. They'd love to see him going again. The 2-1 to Judkins. And there's a hot shot past the diving Kalkowski into right field for a base hit. Maybe that's a good sign for Nick Judkins. Good solid contact and only his second career hit in 19 at-bats against Nebraska pitching. Well, Nick Judkins was asked to do some different things last year. As you see, he gets a fastball low and is able to golf it. That's a good place for Nick Judkins. He is a good pull hitter. But Judkins last year only hit in the 220s most of the season. He was asked to move guys along. He usually batted second in the order. But this year, he took on a different role, kind of replacing the Trevor Adams role in this offense, maybe without the power. Unfortunately, the last month has not been kind to him. First pitch to Anthony Bemboom is low for ball one. 
Ben Boone's had a nice little streak going here. 6'2 senior out of Minnesota over his last 10 games hitting 293. You see the average on the year at 253. So he's really started to ramp it up a little bit over the last 10 games for the Jays. As he looks at a pitch outside for ball 2, 2-0 two oh now on Anthony Bembu. Despite the fact that the average maybe doesn't look overly impressive, he's still hitting about 20 points more than he did all of last season. The power numbers are a little down. He had four home runs last season. Only the one home run this year as he loops it foul and out of play, 2-1. and one. Playing in this ballpark, you're just not going to see a lot of guys with big home run numbers. The Jays only with one home run this year here at TD Ameritrade. And that was from Alex Staley well over a month ago. Conversely, the opposition against Creighton has only hit two home runs in this park, so it's really been stingy this year. The park started to liven up just a little bit as the season drew on, but it doesn't appear to be that way this year. As we saw at the College World Series, home runs were virtually non-existent. Yeah, it's not a it's not a long ball park anymore. The 2-1 is outside ball three. The College World Series for years was thought of as a home run hitter's paradise when it was up on the hill at Rosenblatt, but move it downtown and the power stayed up on the hill. Well, it helps when you're up there in the wind and you're facing north and you've got that southerly breeze behind you. The southerly breeze is against you here. Hit and run on as it's fouled away. Three and two now on Anthony Bembu. And Judkins was off with the pitch, which is natural. You're getting deep in the count now. But Creighton was good at taking extra bases, especially early in the series against Bradley. And I think that's part of the reason why they were able to win two out of three. Their first series win in the Missouri Valley. Very uncharacteristic for an Ed Service team. The 3-2 lifted foul. A lot of room in foul territory here, but not enough for Shefford, as that one's about three rows deep. Crowd still filtering in here at TD Ameritrade Park. They'd sold over 10,000 tickets tonight. Which would make it again one of the larger crowds in college baseball this season, and this is usually the game in which you see the big crowds, not the 20 or 25,000 you saw when these two teams were regional bound or in Nebraska's case in the mid 2000s College World Series bound as that one's looped down the line trouble out there that one might drop and it does rounding third and headed for home is Judkins here comes the throw to the plate and he's safe and the Jays take a one nothing lead on the RBI bloop double by Anthony Bembu. And the key Kevin is that Josh Shepard is unable to locate the ball in time. As he's looking down the line, he got completely turned around, and then it ended up in no man's land. You watch Shefford getting completely turned around. Christensen's not in position, and Kaiser's out of position as well. And you wonder if Kaiser, who is set back in the sun, didn't get a great read on it because, again, he's fighting through some of that sunlight, didn't get the kind of break that he was hoping to on the ball as Anthony Bemboom drives in the run. And this is the first time in the series this year that Creighton has broken out on top first. That's been a bad sign for Nebraska in conference play this year. When they've fallen behind first, they've struggled. They need a lead. Now Nebraska's going to have to play from behind in this one. Two gone, one nothing. Jays, and Alex Staley the batter, and he takes the first pitch in for a strike. If you're sitting in the Creighton dugout right now, you're going, finally, we're getting some blue pits going our way. If you remember back to the first game between these two teams, Nebraska was getting the blue pits, the back liners, little dribblers on the infield. Creighton's been victimized by that a lot this year. They're happy to get one. One ball, one strike on Alex Staley. 216 average this year for Alex Staley, the junior out of Sugar Grove, Illinois. The 1-1. Staley thought about it, but held up two balls and a strike on Alex Staley. Three for eight against Nebraska this year. 273 in his career against the Oscars, but a disappointing year this year for Alex Staley. The 2-1. And the pitch stays up 3-1. and one. He didn't get a hit until the third game of the year. A real slow start. And kind of just battled all year long. He hit 285 last year. Was preseason All-Valley this year. And He's never really gotten that offense going. And they changed positions this year. He was the Jays' starting second baseman the last two seasons. And a line drive into right field. That's a base hit. Bimboom rounding third. Here comes the throw from right to the plate, and he is safe, and it's 2-0 Jays. Well, that service. 
Wants to be as aggressive as he can be, forcing the throw home. You would think with two outs on a hit to right field, especially with these composite bats, it's almost automatic you're going to score. But Ben Boom sliding in safely just ahead of a pretty good throw in from right field. And for Alex Staley, his 18th run batted in and a 2-0 lead for Creighton. And if you remember last year in this game, it was Creighton that got up big first and then had to hold off a furious Nebraska rally. Line drive down the left field line. That ball is foul off the bat of Mike Gerber. So the Jays break out on top with two runs in the first inning. And if you're Ed Service looking out at that number that's not just a straight one or a zero, you've got to be a little bit surprised because there have not been too many multi-run first innings this year for the Jays. And this is the first time, Kevin, since the ninth inning rally against Nebraska in Lincoln where the Jays in any game have strung together three straight hits. They strung together three straight hits in the ninth inning when they were down to Nebraska five to nothing. They were coming back, almost made a furious rally. This is the first time in over a month that they've had hit, 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 and it's all come with two outs. Now Lemke got the first two guys relatively easily on the strikeout and then the McEwen flyout. 25 pitches already for Lemke. This will be number 25 right here. The 0-2 to Gerber. And there's a line drive into right center field. That'll drop in for a base hit. Rounding second and headed to third is Staley. First and third, two out for the Jays here in a first inning that's gone horribly wrong for Nebraska and unbelievably right for the Jays. Make that four straight hits. And I can't tell you the last time the Creighton Blue Jays did that. It's been a while as Mike Gerber, who is a dead fastball hitter, gets a fastball right down the heart of the plate and drives it into a perfect spot, allowing Alex Daly to make the jog all the way around to third base. And it keeps the inning alive for Scott Thornburg. Ted Silva, Nebraska's pitching coach, making his way out to talk with right-hander Tom Lemke, who really struggling in this first inning. They had some big hopes for him. You know, as John mentioned, last start April 6th against Iowa, one and two-thirds innings since that time, and just trying to figure out how to get back into the lineup from a starting standpoint. He struggled so far in this first inning, allowing two runs and four hits, and there's still two men on base. Be with us this Friday for more NCAA baseball as the Huskers host the Minnesota Golden Gophers live from Hawks Field in Lincoln. It's an all-important Big Ten weekend for the Big Red. As the conference tournament looms closer, don't miss the Huskers and the Gophers this Friday night at 6.30 Central right here on NAT1 and NAT HD. As of now, Nebraska out of the Big Ten tournament. Top six go. Line drive to left. Coming on as Kaiser. He didn't see it. Dives. And he does not make the play. It's 3-0 Blue Jays. The throw to third not in time. Thornburg with a base hit right in front of Kaiser who did not get a good read on that ball off the bat. Well, he's not in the sun field now. The sun has kind of disappeared back towards the warning track. He just did not get a great break on the ball. And the one thing about this ballpark, Kevin, is that line drive seemed to hang up a little bit longer, but this one did not hang up long enough for Kale Kaiser, who has struggled here in this first inning. Didn't get a great break on the Ben Boom Bloop double, and then this hit. Obviously, he's shaking his head right now, very frustrated. On the play, Mike Gerber takes third base. Five straight hits with two outs, Kevin. Wow. And here's Jake Peter trying to extend the rally for the Blue Jays. The pitch to Peter is low for ball one. Tyler King running down to the bullpen for Nebraska to start getting loose. That was not the plan for the Huskers in this one to get the bullpen going this early. Scott Thornburg now with RBIs in three straight games. He had gone almost a month without an RBI until he racked up one on Saturday. Now he's got one Sunday and one today. One and one on Jake Peter. Freshman second baseman who Despite some offensive struggles, John has done a nice job in the field this year. He's been a fantastic defensive second baseman, which gave Ed Service the opportunity to move Staley to short. That was one area where Creighton was going to be a little thin this year. And a bouncing ball off of Lemke deflected to Kelly in the throw to first in time. That might have been a fortuitous bounce for the Huskers. That ball looked like it was ticketed for center. The Jays, though, will settle for three, and after one, a three-nothing lead.
on to facebook.com slash NET Sports. Like us and become a fan. You can leave questions, comments, and see what happens behind the scenes, like Kevin and John doing the do si -do during the commercial breaks. Plus, check out what's coming up next on NET Sports. It's fast, fun, and easier than ever to be part of your statewide sports network on facebook.com slash NET Sports. Guys, that did not look like a team struggling offensively. Five consecutive hits and three runs on the board for the Jays. Larry, we're trying to find out the last time the Jays did that. It was a game they played last year on a Sunday that they may have done that against Bradley, but it has been a while as Brandon Koenigstein goes to the hill. Numbers on Koenigstein this year as he goes to work in relief of Ty Block, who threw one inning, and now his night is done. And we'll see a lot of the Creighton bullpen, which is not a bad thing for the Creighton Blue Jays. Their bullpen has been... Really the backbone of this team this year. The 0-1 on Cash Kalkowski, and it's low for a ball, 1-1 one and one to count. An important inning early for Nebraska. Kalkowski, Shefford, and Sanguinetti already down 3-0 after an extremely disappointing weekend at Indiana in which Nebraska kind of had some players that were critical of guys on the team at the end of that. Corey Burleson with some rather pointed comments afterwards. Saying, we got to learn how to win these games we got to learn not to just show up and try to play well here they show up and already down three nothing before really the fans get settled into their seats at td ameritrade and nebraska also had struggles getting back as kenningstein will walk kalkowski that's never a good sign if you're coming right in fresh from the bullpen but nebraska also had some travel difficulties getting back to lincoln they were originally scheduled to finish the series yesterday in bloomington but they Made it a doubleheader because of weather concerns. Then had to kind of spend a little extra time in Indianapolis. Darren Erstead will be the last guy to tell you that that's a reason why the team might struggle or might have issues tonight. But something to keep in the back of your mind and just kind of dog piles on all the stuff you were mentioning. Here's Josh Shefford, the batter. Had a 5-for-12 weekend at Indiana this weekend. And he takes the first pitch inside for a ball. Five straight out of the zone by Koenigstein, who started Kalkowski off with a strike. Ten walks coming into this one in 17 innings pitch. That's been the bugaboo for Koenigstein this year. It's just been control. Not to mention an opponent batting average of 352. Shefford offered a one out of the zone and helped out Koenigstein, one and one. And I think he crossed up his catcher. Anthony Benboom is going to come out and talk with Koenigstein, who has only pitched Kevin in one game. Since April the 3rd, he pitched a couple of weeks ago at Southern Illinois, and you can see the high strike and Shepard snapping the bat back. He knew he went around. But so much was looked at from Brandon Koenigstein. They were hoping at the beginning of the season that he would fit into a Saturday or Sunday role as a starter. Just has not worked out for him. One ball, one strike. Shepard, a chopper, slow roller to short, to second for one, on to first, not in time. A little too slowly hit to turn two, so Shepard's aboard with one out. And Rich Sanguinetti, the batter. We chatted earlier with Darren Erstad and asked him, what's the biggest key for the Huskers to bounce back after that disappointing weekend in Bloomington? Well, we just need to play consistent baseball. Uh, you know, I, I don't care if we're playing conference, non-conference. We have to go out and execute and play our style of baseball. And uh, at times we've shown we can do that, and we can be a pretty good, good ball club. But uh, we're just way too inconsistent. So I'm looking for our, our approach to be solid in all facets of the game today. Well, and he can't be thrilled with the way things have started. A couple of plays defensively that were not the crispest. A couple of well-hit balls off of Lemke and a 3-0 deficit facing his Huskers here in the second inning as Sanguinetti takes strike one. Runner at first is Shefford. And the 0-1 to Sanguinetti. Off speed, caught the corner, nothing in two. Maybe that little discussion between Kankstein and Bemboom has settled him down a little bit. He's now come out and thrown strikes. Well, and he's a guy who could get a bad service two or three innings if he got rolling a little bit here. You know, for Kankstein, things just haven't been the same. And, and, you know, fans of Carlos Zambrano may relate. Zambrano throws a no-hitter, and it seems like his career has not been the same since. Kankstein threw a no-hitter at Wichita State his sophomore year, but... Since then, it just has not been the same. Throw down to first, and Shepard is picked off. Straight a little too far, and Bemboom guns him down at first for the second out. Well, the ball trickled just a little bit away, and Shepard thought that he might have had a jump. But Anthony Bemboom, quick, 
There's the swipe tag, and some of the fans in the ballpark booing, they saw the replay monitor, thought maybe he didn't miss to get the tag. And then Sanguinetti rung up on strikes to end the second inning. Great start for the Blue Jays. They've got a 3-0 lead over Nebraska. Kevin Kugler, John Bishop, Larry Putney back at TD Ameritrade Park in Omaha. Jays with a three spot in the first lead, 3 0. And the Jays knock Tom Lemke out of the game after just one inning as Darren Erstad goes to the pen and brings on left hander Tyler King, John, for his 24th appearance of the season. 626 on the earned run average in 23 innings, 19 hits, 22 runs, 16 earned. The walk to strikeout ratio is the one thing that does concern you. 18 walks versus 16 strikeouts for Tyler King who now has to take on the role of maybe gobbling up a few innings. We thought maybe Nebraska could go pitcher by committee, but they were certainly hoping for a lot more out of Tom Lemke. Tom Lemke was certainly hoping for more as well. The struggles continue for one of the guys that when he came to Nebraska was thought of as just an awfully bright spot. It was a huge coup to get him. He was a 10th round pick by the Rangers in 09 and just has not seen things fall into place after the injuries. The first pitch a strike to Brennan Murphy the number nine hitter in the Jays lineup then back to the top of the order again with Ross and McEwen to follow despite the gaudy numbers we told you about in his career King has made three appearances against the Jays and not allowed an earned run popped up on the infield and the catch made by Pat Kelly for out number one you know, we chatted with Ed Service earlier the head coach of the Jays and Talked a little bit about after a rough season, the resilience his team has shown with those two wins last weekend to win that series. John, you know, but uh, I give these kids credit. It has not been an easy season for them. They're, they're continually working hard in practice. We're playing hard in games. Not a lot of good things have happened to them, but uh, we're starting to see some positives here in the last couple of weeks, and it's a good time to get hot. If it's a time to get hot in college baseball, now's the time. If you can get hot in the next couple of weeks, you can punch your ticket to the NCAAs. If you win your conference tournament, a line drive to right. Darby was playing shallow. And Chance Ross is 0 for 2 as he lines out to Darby for the second out of the second inning. There's a lot of seniors on this team, Kevin. And for Creighton, for a lot of these guys, this is it. I mean, once this season is over, the competitive years of baseball are done. And you would like to think that they can gather it up in the month of May and make some kind of a run. The fortunate thing for them is, unlike Nebraska, they get into the tournament regardless of their conference record. So they've still got a shot down in Springfield in three weeks. 1-0 on Brad McEwen, who flied out to center in the first inning. When things were looking just fine for Tom Lemke in Nebraska, retired the first two men in the first inning. And then five consecutive hits later, Lemke and the Huskers we're down 3-0. The 2-0 lifted foul along the right side. Long run. Kalkowski giving chase. Also over there is Darby. Neither can get it. And it's 2-1 and one on Brad McEwen.
McEwen, the sophomore from Omaha Millard South grad. Fourth leading hitter this year with just a 228 average. That'll indicate to you a little bit about how the season has gone for the Jays offensively. When a 228 hitter is your fourth leading hitter on the squad. Strike on the inside corner, two and two. It was a lot better not long ago. In fact, hitting over 300 for a while, which is why Brad McEwen essentially earned the left field starting spot. But since April the 3rd, the average is just a buck 48. Strike three called. McEwen is down on strikes in a 1 2 3 inning for King and the Huskers. Through two, 3 0 Blue Jays. Creighton on top, three to nothing back here in Omaha. I'm joined by former Blue Jay Chris Gradaville. You're saying hi to a lot of the old guys <laughs> down here in the down here in the dugout. Uh, two, let's go back to 2005. You played Nebraska five times that year, twice in the regional, three times during the regular season. You were always, uh, I think Nebraska fans remember as a Husker killer. Jays remember you as a hero. I think you hit 410 career against the Huskers. Yeah, it, I had a, a good success against Nebraska. Um, it was just fun games. I mean, being an in-state kid, in-town kid that I just I got up for these games. We all did, and it was a great rivalry back then. You attended high school at Omaha Bryant, so obviously fun to play against the in-state school for the in-state school. Talk about that regional back in 05 when you went down to Nebraska, and I think you hit over 500 in that regional. Just a phenomenal performance. It was one of those times that uh, all baseball players know you just you couldn't get out. You couldn't get out. So uh, it was it was wonderful, and uh, Nebraska was a great team that year, and it was a, it was a great regional to have great fan support and in the state of Nebraska. Last question. Talk about this year and the struggles they've had. I know you actually came back. You're living in Spokane, Washington now, but came back to talk to the guys. Yeah, w me and uh, about five other alumni guys that played. Oh, nice catch. Uh, <laughs> that played against or played in that era of 05 to 07, came back and talked to the team and just tried to help them ease this transition of a tough time they kind of went through. And, and I think they took it well, and, and it was great for us to come back and be able to relate with these guys on stuff we went through when we were playing. Good to see you. Nice call on the catch. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, that'll do it for us, John. Chris All right. Gradaville will be up here. Chris and Larry taking off. Larry, obviously a huge fan of Chris Gradaville. Yeah, number, number one. one. First pitch outside for a ball to Austin Darby. Hey, if you're a Creighton guy, he was Creighton through and through. Gradaville it was, it was a captain of the 2007 Missouri Valley Conference Championship team and uh, really brought a lot of intensity to the Jays. One ball, one strike on Austin Darby. Lost in all that, as Chris Gradaville aptly called it. Nice catch by Mike Gerber in center field. What a run he made. A lot of room out there. And Gerber caught up to that well-hit ball off the bat of Pat Kelly. Mike Gerber very rarely, Kevin, gets cheated on a fly ball. He gets a great jump and usually a fantastic read. And he usually cheats in as well. Darby a little looper down the line. The catch is made. In left by Nick Judkins for the second out. So a Good start to this third inning for the third Creighton pitcher Nick Music who has mowed down the first two Huskers he's faced on a couple of fly balls one to center field and one to left and now the right hander Nick Music will face the number nine hitter in the Husker lineup Corey Burleson batting from the left side 
the switch hitting catcher for the Huskers. And a foul ball, 0-1 on Burleson, who broke a 2-for-10 slump on Sunday in game two of the doubleheader. With a career-high four RBI day, two for four with four ribbies, but Nebraska unable to take advantage of that offensive outburst from Burleson, still lost that game and the series. One and one on Burleson, who has become one of the best defensive catchers in the country this year. 18 runners gunned down, and if Burleson can get the bat going like he did Sunday and like he did right there, he'll be a huge part of the Huskers' hopes in the next couple of weeks because he absolutely shuts down the opponent's running game. You just can't get going with Burleson back. You usually don't see a guy throw out over 50% in college as you see Burleson got one up in his eyes and he was able to pull it through the infield into right field for the second Nebraska hit but you've thrown out 18 of 32 last year just 14 of 40 throwing guys out that is a remarkable change in percentage he worked a lot in the offseason not only on hitting but on his defensive prowess behind the plate it's really helped out Nebraska Kaiser takes a first pitch for a strike he flied out to right in the first inning Huskers with two hits, the Jays with five, and more importantly, three runs on the board. No balls, one strike. Go over to first and back in is Burles. And you don't expect to see Corey off to the races at any point. Just two for two in the stolen base department. But Darren Erstad and Will Bolt like an aggressive style. So it wouldn't be the craziest thing ever. He one runner not going in a pitch for ball one. One and one the count on Kale Kaiser. Well, you have a good guy up at the plate who will make contact. If he doesn't make contact, he's drawing walks. He doesn't strike out very often, so you know if Kaiser gets a bat on it, he's going to put it in play. Chopper through the right side and into right field for a base hit. Burleson will stop at second. Runners at first and second as Nebraska tries to rally here with two outs in the third, and Michael Pritchard who extended his hitting streak to 25 straight games. The third longest in school history got a hit in the first inning, and Darren Erstad chatted with us earlier about the play of Michael Pritchard. Uh, he, Mike uses the whole field. Uh, you know, he, he's not, he doesn't try and do too much. He just, he knows what he's good at. He sees where defenses are playing them. He knows how pitchers are attacking him. And he just goes and takes what they give him. And, and when you do that, uh, you're going to be successful. And he just has a God-given ability to, to put the barrel on the ball, and uh, he's doing a very good job for us. Richard down a strike, nothing and one. Almost looked like a softball slap <laughs> style hit that he was attempting there. Trying to get out of the box quickly, maybe punt one into the ground again, just like he did in the first inning, but was thrown out after the wild throw to first. The 0 1. 1 and 1 on Pritchard. 31 straight games. He's reached base. His average now second in the Big Ten Conference this year. And the 382 after that hit. And the amazing thing, Kevin, is the average at the start of this streak was in the low 400. So he's getting his hits one at a time, but they're still coming. 1-1 one, one is high for ball two. Yeah, coming in, John, hitting just 354 during the hitting streak. Well, so you have this hitting streak and your average drops. <laughs> when you're hitting 400, you're going to have to get two for four days. You're going to have to get some two for five days. A lot of one for four days for Michael Pritchard. The 2-1. Chopper towards short and into center field for a base hit. Rounding third and headed home, Corey Burleson. And it's a 3-1 ball game as Nebraska strings together a two-out rally of their own. Three straight hits and a run for the Huskers. Michael Pritchard getting that ball out there and just slapping it to center field. Gets a fastball right down the heart of the plate. And you can see Pritchard with the swing trying to knock that thing into the ground. And it had legs for the 18th run batted in for him this year. So just like Creighton, all of this noise coming with two out, and for Nick Music, he has struggled his last few times out on the hill, and that's gonna bring a visit to the mound from pitching coach Rob Smith. All four runs today coming with two out, the three for the Jays, of course, in that first inning, and not a surprise to see Nebraska play the two out run. That's 112 RBI this year out of 312 total that have come with two outs. So Nebraska thrives in these kind of situations. They most certainly do. They've already hit had more two out RBI this year than they had all of last season. Of course, everything offensively for Nebraska has been up this year. Average home runs, you name it. 
So naturally you would expect that the two out RBI would come with that as well. But this has to be particularly gratifying for Will Bolt to see his team come out here and fight back with some two out noise. And it's still not over yet as Chad Christensen the young man we featured in the open now has a chance and this guy's got some power. We did talk about this ballpark not carrying very well. Well anyone's got the pop to get it out of here. It's Christensen. Bullpen up and going for the Jays as Christensen settles in against Music. Music will look back to second. Christensen struck out swinging in that first inning. He's ready to go. One for five against the Jays this year. And Christensen looks at ball one. When we talk about two out RBIs. Here is your number one producer in that category. 24 of his 44 driven in have come with two outs. Team leader overall as well with 44 on the season, as John mentioned. Strike on the inside corner, one and one. And just 31 RBI in his first two seasons combined before this year. And he started red hot, had six home runs in the first 20 games of the season. And then went on about a two month drought. 1-1 one, one is low ball 2-2-1 two, two and one now on Chad Christensen. He got lifted last time these two teams met. Blake Headley got the start at shortstop. Performed very well. Had a couple of hits in the game. But Christensen seemed to kind of take that to heart and started to hit the ball again. That's a luxury that Darren Erstad has that Ed Service does not. He can go to the bench. If a guy's not performing, he can go to the bench, pull in one of the youngsters, and set a guy down, give him a chance to get a new perspective. 2 1 in the dirt. Nice block by Ben Boom. He's already thrown out a guy, picked off Shepard earlier in the ballgame at first base. So playing good defensively behind the plate early on. 3 and 1, though, on Christensen. Aaron Erstad's team trying to rally after a three spot in the first inning from the Jays. The 3 1. Christensen with a line drive well hit the center field but Gerber with plenty of room makes the catch and the inning is over Huskers put one on the board on three hits two men left on base 3-1 great Be with us Thursday, May 17th for our next Creighton game as the Blue Jays host the Wichita State Shockers in the Missouri Valley Conference from right here at TD Ameritrade Park. It's the Jays and the Shockers right here on NET1 and NET HD. Jays with a 3-1 lead, John. Sorry, Kevin. It's been an upside-down year in the Valley. You've got Wichita State and Creighton, two teams who have traditionally played for the championship year in and year out, both towards the bottom of the standings. It's very unusual. And the Lockhorns next week will be here. Judkins takes the pitch high from Tyler King for ball one. Nebraska showing a little life last half inning. Can they get the pitching from the bullpen to hold the Jays offense in check as Judkins fouls it away and it's one and one. The suddenly resurgent Creighton Blue Jays offense at least over the last couple of games in the first inning tonight. 
managed to score some runs in the ninth inning as well. They put up seven ninth inning runs last weekend against Bradley. That almost increased by 200 percent the runs they had scored in the ninth inning all season. I was told there would be no math. The 1-1 one -one is high ball too. Had to work very, very hard on that. <laughs> Tyler King on in relief of Tom Lemke, who could only last one inning tonight. And a hot shot to second. Pat Kelly with a nice play, throws to first for the out. Defended perfectly, John. Kelly was right in the path of that ball with his feet on the outfield grass. Yeah, they had scouted Judkins very well. His last single went through that almost exact same spot. And so Nebraska slid him over about three steps to his left. Thus the ball came right to him. Otherwise, you're looking at another base hit. One gone now for Bemboom, who doubled in a run in the first inning. Later scored, and Bemboom lifts it to right field. Darby came in a step. He'll back up and make the catch. And there's two gone, and Tyler King doing a nice job out of that Nebraska pen. Five in a row retired by the Husker left-hander. And he's managed to do it on only 14 pitches. Alex Staley now the batter. RBI single in the first. He scored as well. Two gone, bottom of the third, 3 1 Blue Jays. And the strike is called. Nothing and one on Alex Staley. Ball just missed one and one now. Jays just nine and nine this year at home, hitting 230 as a team at home. But they've got a nine game season ending homestand starting with this one tonight. King could not keep it in play. Long throw across, and Kalkowski just keeps the ball in play, avoids the error from Christensen. But King getting a piece of that ball probably thwarted that play for Christensen. Yeah, I thought King was going to come up with this cleanly. And he just muffed it. It went right over the top of his glove. Usually that's a routine play. And they're still debating right now on whether or not that should be a hit or an error. The throw definitely pulled Kalkowski off the bag, but it will be scored a hit. So Alex Staley, two for two tonight. The sixth Creighton base hit. He's aboard with two out. This is when the trouble started in the first inning for Nebraska. Two out, nobody on. Five straight hits later, the Huskers were down three runs. Ball, no strikes on Mike Gerber. In the dirt, nice block by Burleson, 2-0 on Gerber with Thornburg on deck. Alex Staley's going to be running here. It better be a hit and run because Staley just won for one this year, stole his first base of the year over the weekend. But we've talked about Burleson and his ability to throw guys out. And he has been tremendous this year. 18 runners gunned down in 32 attempts. The 2-0, which is high ball three, three and zero now on Gerber. What is it with these pitchers? They can't can't enjoy two outs, nobody on. That'll make things interesting. The 3-0 in there for a strike, taking all the way was Gerber. Gerber's average down 73 points from a year ago, but over the last 11 games. He's got the average over 300 in those last 11, including the hit tonight. Power numbers are down a bit, too. He's had three home runs this year, which is a team high. He had seven last year. 40th round pick by the Yankees out of high school in Naperville. There goes a runner, pitch chopped to first. Kalkowski gloves it, tags the bag, and the inning is over. So the two out single left at first in the third. 3-1, Creighton with the lead over Nebraska.
Baseball this month on NAT. Nebraska Stories celebrates the 150th anniversary of the Homestead Act. Hear about African Americans who claim land and hear about grasshoppers stripping a field back in the day. Plus, the story of working flour mills in a small Nebraska town that still celebrates its Czech homesteading roots. Nebraska Stories airs Sunday, May 20th at 9.30 Central on NET1 and NET HD. Head to the top of the fourth here in Omaha. It's 3-1 Creighton. Now back to Kevin and John. Well, Larry, you've got to be careful when you talk about grasshopper stripping a field. TD Ameritrade's ground crew gets very nervous as we take a look at the new pitcher for the Creighton Blue Jays. It'll be Mark Winkleman who will be out there for yet another appearance. Winkleman is the young man who has been the number one lefty out of the bullpen for the Jays. His team high appearance for Winkleman is 28th of the year, but he has struggled as of late, Kevin. Well, the Jays are hoping that he can keep the Huskers right here after Nebraska rallied a bit in the third. Pitch in there for a strike. And it's nothing and two on Cash Kalkowski, who walked and was erased in that second inning. Pitch is high for a ball one and two the count on Cash Kalkowski. Six appearances for Winkleman since April the 13th. And the problem has been this. Throwing too many balls. Now he is ahead in the count, or was ahead in the count. One ball and two strikes, but in six and a third innings in those last six appearances, Kevin, he has walked seven. Seven hits to go along with that. Four earned runs. And dribbler up the line and foul. Kalkowski, who apparently was hit on that inside pitch on the 3-1 in his first at bat. It was ball four, but apparently it got a piece of him, and it was scored a hit by pitch. Either way, he got on base. And was a race. The 2-2 and a hot shot to third. Gloved nicely by Ross. The long throw across in time. And Kalkowski is out number one here in the fourth inning. Good start for Mark Winkleman. He fights back. Throws a fastball in on the hands. And Kalkowski grounds it sharply to Chance Ross. Here's Josh Shefford. Reached on the fielder's choice in the second and then was picked off of first base when Bemboom threw behind him. Caught him at trying to get an extra step on a pitch that was in the dirt. Shefford couldn't get back in time and was erased in that second inning. A 1 0, a wave and a miss, and it's 1 and 1. We talk about the struggles of Mark Winkleman as of late. However, he has only allowed two runs in this ballpark in 16 innings pitched this year. So he feels very comfortable here. As most pitchers should. It is a pitcher's ballpark. 1-1 one, one is low and away. 2-1. and one. On Josh Shefford. He is second this year in the Big Ten in home runs. 5-12 for 12 against Indiana over this past weekend. And a pitch for a strike. 2-2 two and two now from Winkleman to Shefford. The 2 2 pitch. Bouncing ball foul wide of third. And the count stays 2 and 2. Yeah, an up and down career for Josh Shefford at the plate. Started his freshman year at 301 average. Hit five home runs. And then last year, the average took a huge nosedive. Down to 220, but now, now it's back up into the mid 300s. And we mentioned the defense. The 2 2 swing and a miss. Shefford. Out on strikes for the second out of the fourth inning. We chatted with Darren Erstad earlier. Two weeks to go for the Huskers in conference play, and we asked him what are the keys to be successful for the Huskers and get into that postseason tournament. Starts and ends with starting pitching. We we have to throw strikes. We we cannot let leadoff guys get on, and we have to play good defense. That formula has been around for a long time, and uh, I'm not making this stuff up. But we we just have to be more consistent in those areas. We just can't give free bases, and and we've just done too much of that. And put ourselves in a position where we're behind, and and our hitters have been battling. But but just you can't continue to battle offensively every single game. So we need more consistency on the mound, and we'll continue to look for the right combination on the mound. And starting pitching was the problem tonight. Tom Lemke only goes one. Huskers down 3-1 in the fourth.
Beautiful night for a ball game in Omaha, Nebraska for young and old as the Jays have a 3-1 lead over Nebraska. Bottom of the fourth inning with John Bishop and Larry Putney. I'm Kevin Kugler. Tyler King still on the hill for the Oscars. He'll face the lower third of the Jays order. Thornburg, Peter, and Murphy here in the fourth inning in the first pitch upstairs to Scott Thornburg for ball one. This could very well be the key inning here for Tyler King. So far, he's gotten through the first two innings on just 23 pitches. Four innings is his career high. It would behoove the Jays right now to maybe take some time with their at-bats. They were a little jumpy on King right off the get-go, and it hasn't paid off. Only one man has reached through seven batters. A little looper to right coming on as Darby will play it on a hop. And Thornburg's aboard to lead off the fourth inning with a base hit. Second hit of the night for Scott Thornburg. Hit number seven for the Blue Jays. And he gets a fastball over the plate. And then the ball gets away as they throw it back in. And taking second base is Scott Thornburg. Nebraska just with some horribly sloppy play. And now the, the umpires are going to say out. The umpires are going to say Thornburg is out. Well, Kevin, I was looking down to watch the replay. Did not see what precipitated Thornburg trying to take the extra base. And Ed Service is going, wait a minute. Well, the ball kicked all the way down behind the plate. Burleson had to go grab it. Ed Service is trying to find out why Scott Thornburg is out, but Thornburg is out for the first out here in the fourth inning. Well, Kevin, I'm going to have to see a replay on it because I didn't see what happened. Ed Service seems to be satisfied with the call. Now, he's usually not one to get terribly demonstrative, but if he thinks he's right, he'll let an umpire know about it. What an unusual circumstance. We'll have to wait and get an official word on the scoring. Watch again. There's Thornburg standing at first. Ball comes in. Now watch it gets away. Now the only thing I can think of is time is called. And maybe if time was called. Well, I don't know. I don't know. We're going to have to get an explanation on that somehow. So one gone and a breaking ball in for a strike to Jake Peter. Huge break for Nebraska. Thornburg singled, but ruled out for the first out of the fourth inning. And the pitch in there for a strike on Peter. That's a tough break for the Jays, whatever it was that happened. And a swing and a miss. Jake Peter down on strikes, and there's two gone in the fourth inning. First base coach is John Moore. He's still talking about it at first base. Yeah. Maybe Larry can shed some light on things. Larry? Well, thanks, Kevin. I talked with or heard Scott Thornburg talking to his teammates when he came back to the dugout, and Scott Thornburg said the official at first, the umpire at first, called him out because first base coach John Moore tapped him on the bottom, which is, in effect, assisting a runner. And so Thornburg said, all I did was toss in my gloves. Umpire at first said no. He helped him, assisted him to second, runner out. Wow. That is one you don't see every day or any day. It's similar to the, to the rule in football where, you're, you know, if you're in a goal line situation and the guy gets behind you and pushes forward, you, you're not supposed to do that. The same thing can be said here as Murphy sees one goes over his head. We'll see it again. We've got one more angle. Now watch. Thornburg's there at first. Keep an eye on the bottom, as Larry Putney pointed out. Okay. A, a, a pat on the back. Now he did give a little bit of a little bit of a push there at the end. Boy, that's a weird, weird technicality. Technically, I, you know, the umpire is right, but that's one of those where the spirit of the rule was not violated. I mean, it was just more of a kind of go, 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 but you're not allowed to do that. And Mike Droll called it immediately. There was no hesitation from him. And on the replay, you could see the little nudge at first. Wow. Great work by the guys in the truck to find that replay for us. Otherwise, we would have never known. And thanks to Larry for finding out. Now Larry wants to take a bow, Larry. <laughs> right. I, I think typically when you see that play called is when there's a runner going past and the ball goes by first, and sometimes you'll see a coach grab a kid and stop him from turning. That's typically, but not on a touch like that. You usually don't see that call. Well, now Brennan Murphy is going to reach base on the strikeout that got into the dirt, and Burleson with a game effort trying to throw from his knees, but 
reaching first on the wild pitch so he's aboard with two out in what has been a very odd fourth inning here in Omaha. <laughs> you can say that again. It has been a very odd fourth inning here in Omaha. I'd ask that you not say that <laughs> again. Okay, gotcha. Two gone, top of the order <laughs> as the throw over to first to keep an eye on Murphy. So two strikeouts in the inning for King, who gets a break on a technicality. And if you're the Creighton Blue Jays right now, you're going, well, gosh, isn't this what that idiot in the booth said? The keys to the game was to be aggressive on the base pass. You normally don't see a guy able to take a base on a routine throw in from the outfield. And the Jays were being aggressive, but unfortunately, runners inter or excuse me, a coach's interference call. The 1 0 lifted to right, but Darby playing shallow again, and he makes the catch. Same thing happened to Chance Ross in the second inning. Going to try a different fielder. Darby's waiting for him on the doorstep there. 3 1 Jays after four in Omaha. Alongside John Bishop with Larry Putney, I'm Kevin Kugler from TD Ameritrade Park in Omaha, Nebraska. Creighton with a 3-1 lead as we start the fifth inning. Ed Service, the head coach of the Jays, joining us. And it's got to be a nice feeling to look up at that scoreboard after an inning and see a crooked number up there from that offense. A nice start to this ballgame, Coach. Yeah, and it all happened with two outs, Kevin. That's something that we have seen very little of this, uh, this spring so far. But, uh, you know, it looks like we're putting some better swings on the baseball here tonight. And, but we know we got to score some more runs. Three's not enough. Ed, you've got Mark Winkleman out there for his second inning. How does the bullpen look the rest of the way? Well, Mark's going to go. We're going to try to get five through five more batters with Wink, and then we'll ch turn it over to Chase Webb and Kurt Spomer and Reese McGraw. So we got to get through this inning. This is a big inning for us. Coach, what kind of an explanation did you get on that uh, out on what coach's interference? Well, he said he pushed him out, you know, and, he, and you can't make contact with the runner. I mean, I didn't see the replay, so... Uh, it's just one of those calls again. I had not seen that call in 29 years, so I'm not surprised the way things are going. Coach, good luck the rest thank, of the way. Thank you, guys. Ed Service, the head coach of the Creighton Blue Jays. I'm always curious as to what the explanation is of something that, and you feel a little better because neither one of us were quite sure what was going on. And for a guy 29 years in the business, and there's no more of a baseball guy in this ballpark tonight than Ed Service, for him not to know what was going on, I feel a little better. Yeah, I would dare say of the uh, 10,000 or so folks who were in this ballpark, <laughs> no, none of us may have ever seen that. I, I know I've never seen it watching baseball for the last 25 years. Two balls and a strike. Pat Kelly, Austin Darby, Corey Burleson against Mark Winkleman here for the Jays. And a chopper, short, Staley, long throw, got it. You gotta like the way these Huskers hustle down the line, though, making routine plays. You know, it kind of takes advantage of these composite bats, too, Kevin. Uh, since they went to the composite bats, ground balls through the infield don't seem to have quite the velocity that they used to. They're supposed to act a lot more like wood bats, and you've got to be on your toes on the infield. And if you've got guys hustling down the line like young Pat Kelly is, a routine play like that 
doesn't become a routine play. You've got to hurry that throw. Austin Darby. Fly down. His only time up tonight to left in the third. Big swing from Darby. And the count evens up a ball and a strike. Mark Winkleman doing his job so far. Holding the Huskers in check. The 1-1, one -one, a good breaking ball for a strike, and it's 1-2. and two. It's a good bounce back performance, too, from Winkleman, who, as we mentioned, has struggled over his last six appearances. The 1-2. Swing and a miss. Darby chasing one out of the zone down on strikes, and quickly two gone and five in a row sent down by Winkleman here. As we have got two out in the fifth. And he threw him a low breaking ball in the dirt intentionally, and... Darby, who came in as the best Husker this year, hitting against the Blue Jays. 0 for 2 tonight. And here's Corey Burleson, singled from the left side and scored in the third and takes a strike from the right side, down 0-1. Heard Ed Service mention the next five batters. Well, you had Darby, a lefty. Now you turn Burleson around to the right side. You'll have Kaiser, a switch hitter, and then Pritchard, a lefty. So playing those percentages, lefty-lefty matchup. 1-1 to Burleson. All the way, 1-2 and two now with two out in the Husker half of the fifth inning. Jays trying to salvage the third game of this season series, but more importantly for Creighton, win their third in a row. 1-2 fouled away again. Jays have only won three in a row this year. One time came at the very beginning of the season. That was a, They had a season-long three-game winning streak to start this season off. Two of those three game win streaks. I correct myself, they won against Pacific, BYU, and La Tech in March. So no longer than a three game winning streak this year. Well, until the Bradley series, they hadn't won two in a row since the back to back wins in a doubleheader against North Dakota. The 1 2 fouled away again. Burleson making Winkleman work for this final out of the fifth inning. All the damage in this game done with two outs, so make the pitcher work for it. Strike three called. Beautiful breaking ball from Winkleman. Burleson throws it at the plate. Three strikeouts for Winkleman and a 3-1 lead for the Blue Jays. Bottom of the fifth inning at TD Ameritrade Park in Omaha alongside John Bishop. I'm Kevin Kugler. Creighton with a 3-1 to one lead over the Huskers in the fifth. Darren Erstad, head coach of Nebraska, joining us after a rough start from Tom Lemke. You got a little lift from Tyler King, coach. Now you got to get the offense going a little bit. Yeah, we do. We've had a very few opportunities to get going. They're throwing very well. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to have to keep swinging it, uh, find a way to get a couple across the board. You're going to send Ryan Hander out here. How does your bullpen look the rest of the way? Uh, you know, we're just going to mix, mix and match with uh, lefty-righty combinations, try and get as many guys to work as we can and uh, see how it plays out. 
Derrett Erstad and the Huskers. Good luck the rest of the way, Coach. Thanks, guys. 3-1 lead for Creighton. Three runs, seven hits, no errors for the Jays. One run, four hits, no errors for Nebraska. And Hander making his way out to the hill. The junior from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. John making his 13th appearance of the season. And Ryan Hander has experience against the Jays this year. He made a start, got the win the last time in this ballpark. Just went two innings, gave up a hit. No runs in his lifetime against the Jays. Two appearances, 1-0 record, no runs in three total innings. Burleson on the bunt in front of the plate, throws to first. And Brad McEwen trying to bunt his way on is retired for the first out here in the fifth inning. Oh, you're struggling as Brad McEwen has. Try to get on any way you can. The problem is that bunt needed to go down the third baseline and get far enough away from the catcher to make him run a little bit. But right in front of the plate, routine play. Burleson, one out. And here's Nick Judkins, one for two tonight. Had a single and a run scored in that three-run Jays first inning. So far, that three spot holding up. First pitch a strike, and it's nothing and one. Andrew will throw a fastball, breaking ball, change up. The 0 1 from Hander. Breaking ball, a little low, and it's one and one on Judkins. Nick Judkins from Iowa Central Community College. Two for 20 against Nebraska in his career. Both times he has pulled the ball to the right side. And we watch Kelly again. He's aligned almost in the exact same spot he was the last time Judkins was at the plate. Got plenty of room up the middle. The one two and he goes that direction goes to left center and he drops it in for his second hit of the night. Big turn for Judkins as Sanguinetti gets the ball back in and Judkins aboard with a one out single and instead of going to the right Johnny went opposite field. And he gets a breaking ball that hangs. It's a pitch that you can see very easily and it's one that you can also take to the opposite field and good hitters will do that. Judkins. Feeling a little bit better about things. We told you he'd only had seven hits over the last month or so of the season. Multiple hits in two of those games. So here it again, a two-hit night for Nick Judkins. Well, they'd love to see him get going again like he was in March when he hit 351 for the month. With Chance Ross doing what he's done other than tonight where he's 0 for 3. But he's been a little bit of a spark. Bam boom. At the plate now. He's had some good moments as he fouls it off. Jays would love to just find a little bit of offense because the pitching's been good enough to win games in the conference this year. Kevin, the ERA and the team defense is almost identical to last year. The team ERA is in the same ballpark. The team defense has always been good under Ed Service, but the difference has been a 45-point drop in the team batting average. And sometimes it's, it's not even just the batting average but it's just getting the timely hits Jays this year have had a number of opportunities where they've had runners at third base less than two out and can't even make the productive out whether it be a ground ball up the middle or a sack fly stranded a lot of guys on base this year when they've had golden scoring opportunities and you don't need a hit to always bring them home and a pitch gets away from Burleson on the second goes Judkins a big insurance run now in scoring position for the Jays on the wild pitch from Ryan Hander that Burleson could not corral and for Hander that's only the second wild pitch of the year. Well here's an opportunity you've got less than two out now a runner in scoring position. And at the very least you want to make a productive out hit the ball to the right side. That runner to third base. And he tries to go that direction and fouls it off one and two right idea though for Anthony Bemboom. Trying to play some fundamental baseball. One out in the inning. Jays with a 3-1 lead and a chance to add to it here in the fifth. Once again, just the same defensive alignment as there was with Judkins. Kelly playing more towards first base. A lot of room to his right. Lifted to left. Kaiser with plenty of room. He'll make the catch for the second out. So Ben Boom. Trying to go to right field his last swing. That time, a lazy fly ball to left. No advance for the runner, obviously, and there's two gone. Trying to go to the opposite field, just like Judkins did. But got under it. OK, 
Kale Kaiser, who had a first couple of innings, he'd just as soon forget out in the field. As a routine play. So now it's up to Alex Daly, who is only two for two tonight. And both of his hits have come with two outs. One drove in a run in that three run first inning. And the pitch. Breaking ball. Staley diving out of the way. That almost caught the plate. <laughs> I was going to say, that almost looked like a strike. One ball, no strikes. Runner at second, Nick Judkins. Andrew will keep a close eye on him and whirl back towards second. No play. It was the last time. The first time I should say these two teams played the last time that Alex Daly had a two hit game. He has not had a three hit game this year. A line drive well hit but well foul. Staley with a little pop. Remember the only guy in a Jays uniform this year to leave the yard at TD Ameritrade Park. The guy in the batter's box. Alex Daly none of those guys. They did. I mean, they may leave the park. <laughs> not via the home run. With their dates. Well, one would hope. The 1-1. One, one. There's a drive to left. Kaiser, though, with a lot of room. He was barely able to move for that one. Waits for it, makes the catch, and the inning is over. So the one-out single left at second. Still a 3-1 Jays lead. Back at Omaha, head to the top of the sixth. The Creighton Blue Jays on top, 3-1. I am joined by the Associate Athletic Director for Creighton, Mark Burgers. Mark, great to have you with us. Well, first of all, let's talk about uh, what a great year it's been in athletics for Creighton. Three teams headed to the NCAAs this, this year. It has been a really great year overall. Obviously, it started off the year with soccer making the uh, College Cup, which is uh, great for them, and then continuing into men's and women's basketball, and the men making it to the second round, and it was uh, pretty unique to uh, host an event in your home city, and then Send both teams on the road, uh, one to Oklahoma and one to North Carolina. So it's been a great year. When we take a look at some of the teams that would love to be outdoors during the winter months here, you've got a terrific facility being built on campus for those teams like baseball and softball, golf, soccer. Uh, we do. We have uh, the uh, Rasmussen Center going up uh, just east of the Ryan Athletic Center on campus there, and it'll be uh, an indoor turf facility. Uh, so we'll be able to co accommodate baseball and softball and men's and women's soccer and all the outdoor sports. So being in the northern hemisphere, that's a pretty big deal to, for them to be able to train. So we're excited. Great night tonight. Great attendance, Mark. We appreciate you being here. Absolutely. Thanks to have us. Sixth inning, a 3-1 lead for the Blue Jays as Kaiser sends that one deep to left field. Judkins hustling back into the gap, and Judkins makes a terrific play. Leaning onto his knees. And there's the first out. Nice jump on that ball, too. Laying out for it as Kaiser gives it a ride. Now we're starting to see the pitch count ride up on Mark Winkleman. This is this will be his 31st pitch coming up. He's only cleared the 30 pitch mark four times this season. But he was asked 
to go through the next five batters. This presumptively would be the last man he faces. But if he retires Pritchard, maybe they give him a shot at Christensen with two out and just save the man for the next inning. Nice play by Brad McEwen out there in left to Rob Kaiser. One gone. And Michael Pritchard, who's two for two tonight. And Pritchard now three for three tonight. So much for those one hit nights to keep the hitting streak going. Michael Pritchard, three for three, is driven in the only Husker run and a solid liner to left center. Well, Pritchard hits it to all fields. And in this case, he's going the opposite way. Slap liner by Michael Pritchard, three for three tonight with an RBI. And as we presumed, it will be a go to the bullpen with one out runner at first. Jays will turn it over to Mr. Webb. Chase Webb making his way in. Winkleman doing his job. Winkleman getting congratulations from his teammates, holding the Huskers right there, 3-1. He is responsible for Pritchard over at first after his third hit of the night. Now Chase Webb trotting onto the field for the Creighton Blue Jays, making his 22nd appearance of the season. We'll tell you about Chase Webb in just a moment. Blue Jays three, Huskers one, top of the sixth inning, one out, one on. Chase Webb's 22nd appearance, the Jays' leader this year in earned run average. Now Webb has been spot on as of late. Only one earned run in his last 17 appearances. That stretches 24 and two-thirds innings as you look at the overall numbers. He is not allowed an earned run at TD Ameritrade Park. He will inherit a runner at first base in the form of Michael Pritchard in a two run game. Webb has only allowed five inherited runners to score of the 24 he has inherited this season. He'll have to go through a tough spot in the order with Christensen and Kalkowski and potentially Josh Shepard. Jay's holding on to a two run advantage. Christensen tonight 0 for 2, struck out and flied out to center. One gone, runner at first, and the pitch is low and away for a ball. Christensen, 317 on the year, eight homers, 44 runs driven in. The 1 0 inside for a ball, 2 0 now on Chad Christensen. This is a very dangerous pitch right here for Webb. I don't think that Christensen's going to have a green light here. Good hitters count. Good fastball hitter. 2-0, swing and a miss. He took a healthy cut. Came up empty, 2-1. Yeah, and he got a good fastball to hit, too. Ben Boone getting the sign from the Jays' dugout. Tom Smith, the pitching coach. He's done a tremendous job with the Jays and his pitching staff. The 2-1. There goes the runner, and the pitch fouled off to the right. Christensen trying to hit behind Pritchard on that right side, and the count evens two and two. Not necessarily call off the hit and run right here. It may happen yet again.
Richard four stolen bases in seven attempts this year. Not running the 2-2 in the dirt. Nice block by Anthony Bemboom. Counts full three and two. And with one out, try to stay out of the double play. Would not be surprised to see Pritchard moving here again. Didn't move on the last pitch. See if they can catch a Jay infielder out of position here. There goes a runner. Fouled away. I'm sorry, Kevin Christensen this year, though, is a potential strikeout victim. Second most strikeouts on the team. So there's always the chance of the strike him out, throw him out. But Nebraska has made their bread and butter by being aggressive, and they've certainly done that in this series. They haven't really had a chance to do that here tonight. Pritchard with a short lead. We're going to keep an eye on him where we'll throw over. Christensen back in for the 3-2 from Webb. Pritchard goes. Pitch low, ball four. And the Huskers with runners at first and second. And only one out for Cash Kalkowski. It was not a problem for Webb last weekend where he threw nearly spotless relief in two appearances against Bradley, but he did have some control issues a couple of weeks ago against Illinois State. So despite the fact that his ERA is lowest on the team and he's had so many successful outings, Control issues have been a problem at times. Kalkowski tonight hit in the second, grounded out in the fourth. 0 for 1 this evening. Swing and a miss. Kalkowski was aiming for the left field stands with that hack, looking for his fifth home run of the year. Pitch just dropped in. Maybe even been too far inside, but Kalkowski was swinging for the downs. Got Pritchard at second, Christensen at first. And the 0-1 coming from Webb. One and one now on Kalkowski. Huskers have a huge weekend this weekend with Minnesota. There's about eight teams all bunched up after Purdue, it seems, in that Big Ten standings. Only the top six teams in the league make the conference tournament in Columbus. Nebraska, if the season ended today, would not make it. 1-1 and Kalkowski's hit and the bases are loaded. So Nebraska would like to find a little bit of that mojo that they had going a few weeks ago. As Kalkowski gets plunked on the elbow. Tried to jam him with a fastball and it rode in and right off the elbow. And here comes Rob Smith and Webb has now pitched him and his teammates into some trouble here. With Shepard and Sanguinetti licking their chops. And Nebraska now with a chance to put up a crooked number here. You mentioned the weekend series. It is big. It, you have to figure at the very least Nebraska's got to win their next two series. They take at least two out of three against Minnesota at home. Then they travel to Michigan who's second to last in the league standings. At minimum they need to win four of those six games. Feel comfortable with them making the tournament if they were able to do that but that series last weekend to show you the importance of a game had they won one of the two games on Sunday in the doubleheader instead of seventh place where they are right now they'd be in a four way tie for second had they just won one game in that doubleheader on Sunday in Bloomington so that's the difference that just one skinny game can make in a season Nebraska's had a few of those this year that they're going to look back on and say mm, Northwestern being paramount among them absolutely First pitch with the bases loaded to Shefford as a strike. And it's nothing and one. Huge moment in this ballgame. Pritchard at third, Christensen at second. And over at first, Cash Kalkowski. And the second leading home run hitter in the Big Ten, Josh Shefford at the plate, the 0-1. He was thinking grand slam, and he came up empty. Nothing and two as Webb jumps way out in front. Shefford has grounded into three double plays this year. Jay's hoping for the fourth to get them out of the sixth inning. Webb is set. Base is loaded, one out. Strike three called. Sheffert frozen at the plate. And there's two gone here in the sixth inning. Wow. Well, 
Control problem's not an issue there. Strike out on three pitches. Watch that breaking ball drop off the edge of the plate. Perfectly placed. And Shepard can only watch it go by. His second strikeout tonight for the Jays pitching staff. That's six. And now you're one batter away from getting out of this bases loaded one out situation. And it's Rich Sanguinetti who takes the pitch outside for a ball. Shepard could not put the ball in play. Couldn't put it in the air. Would have scored a run with Pritchard's speed at third. So now the Jays with a chance to get out of this with no damage done. The 1-0 to Sanguinetti. Chopper to the right side. Second baseman Peters got it. Throws to first in time. And the Jays dodge a huge bullet in the sixth. The Huskers leave them loaded. Still 3-1 Creighton. Each Thursday night on NAT television, join Kim Todd and the Backyard Farmer experts as they dig in for a 60th anniversary season filled with memories. You can count on the Backyard Farmer team for the best lawn and garden advice and tips and techniques that make any thumb seem green. Celebrating 60 years and still growing, Backyard Farmer, Thursday night at 7 Central on NET1 and NET HD. New pitcher for the Huskers here in the bottom of the sixth inning, left-hander Aaron Bummer making his 18th appearance of the season, John. Aaron Bummer, who has a previous appearance this year against the Jays, threw a scoreless inning, gave up a couple of walks and a strikeout, also had an appearance last weekend against Indiana in two innings, gave up a run on two hits and struck out two. It's particularly good against lefties, and you've got three lefties out of the next four batters coming up. So Darren Erstad mentioning he's going to pitch matchups the rest of the way. And it's Bummer's job to get through these left-handed batters here in the sixth inning. And the first pitch is upstairs to Mike Gerber for ball one. Gerber singled in that three-run first inning. One for two tonight. Two and oh on Mike Gerber. Boy, what an inning. What a lift for the Jays in the top half of this inning. Bases loaded, one out. Chase Webb able to sit down Shefford and Sanguinetti. As the line drive down the right field line is fair for Gerber. Gerber rounding first. He'll take the big turn, but a good job by Austin Darby to get there and hold Gerber to the long single. Darby was quick, and if he had thrown behind the runner, he might have had a chance to get him. He was there that fast as Gerber rounded hard, but had to put on the brakes and retreat. We were getting a good swing on the lefty and lining over. First baseman Cash Kalkowski's head. So the Jays, for the second time tonight, with the leadoff man aboard. Now the last time he was erased on one of the most unusual calls we've seen, coaches' interference. No such luck this time for the Huskers, as we'll see Ted Silva, the pitching coach, come out and have a word. Now he will have to deal with right-hander Scott Thornburg. Now the Jays with nine hits tonight which doesn't sound like a ton in most cases, but when you've been an offensive team that has struggled this year, 
Nine hits and three runs. Six innings in looks pretty good. The nine hits tonight match the nine hits in the last two games between these two teams combined. And a bunt right back to the mound. Bummer will go to first, but nobody was there. Nebraska's Pat Kelly late to cover the bag, and everybody is safe. And Darren Erstad bemoaned sloppy play like that on Sunday at Indiana. And you can see the look on his face. He can't believe that one. Oh, he's very upset. And everything else was executed fine. Burleson came out from behind the plate. It's his job to tell the pitcher which base to go to. He immediately said first base. But a mistake by Kelly not covering in time. Good bunt by Thornburg as it died in front of the play. There was no chance to get the runner at second, so the Jays have an opportunity here. It will be scored, an infield hit. And now a bunt up the third baseline and foul off the bat of Jake Peter. So the 10th base hit of the night. One could call that a generous base hit for Scott Thornburg. Fielder's choice, we'll watch it again. But watch him instantly. Burleson says go to first, but Kelly is not there in time. He needed to be to the bag, or almost to the bag, when the ball was received by the pitcher. There's a strike thrown by Bummer. Nice pitch, and it's nothing in two. And it's just a routine rotation play. Your first baseman is charging to defend the bunt. Your second baseman has to be in position at the bag at first to get the throw. And he was moving in that direction, just wasn't moving with a lot of urgency. One and two now on Jake Peter. So the Jays, who got out of a huge jam in the top half of this inning, now with a chance to add some insurance in the bottom half, the one-two. And Peter lifts it in the air to center. Sanguinetti, with lots of time, makes the catch. And there's the first out here in the sixth. And for Scott Thornburg, two unusual plays for him tonight. He was the one that singled but was called out on coach's interference, advancing to second. And then this bunt single on a miscommunication, or at least wrong execution by Kelly. It's his first three-hit game. And the first pitch is outside for ball one to Brennan Murphy. Murphy reached in the fourth after striking out on a wild pitch. It's been an odd night all the way around, the 1-0. That's fouled off below us, 1-1. One one. Now for the Jays, these are the kinds of situations that they have not been able to take advantage of the opponent's mistakes. They were able to do it against Bradley last weekend in the ninth inning. The 1-1. One -one. High ball two, two and one now. On the number nine hitter, Brennan Murphy. Kind of curious strategy. Usually it's an automatic. If you've got first and second, nobody out. Ed Service will ask the next batter to bunt. And Peter did try on the first pitch. And there's a slap in the left for a base hit. Holding at third is Gerber. And now the Jays with the bases loaded and one out. The Huskers had him loaded with one out in the top half of the inning, did not score. And now the Jays with a chance to break it open in the bottom half. Well, we talked about Chance Ross in the open, how he has been able to produce runs as we watch Murphy. And it's the lefties helping do the damage here against Hander, who is so good against left-handers this year, just going with the pitch, going opposite field. I haven't seen much of that from Brennan Murphy this year, but the Jays will take it. And now here's a run-producing situation for Chance Ross and a chance to break this game open. And the first pitch a strike from Bummer, and it's nothing in one. If you're thinking double play ball, which if you're a Nebraska fan, you most certainly are. Two double plays that Ross has hit into this year. But it's not a big double play team. The Jays have only hit into 15 all season. And a chopper foul, and it's 0-2. Now part of that could be because of the offensive struggles of the Jays. They've not had a lot of opportunities to hit into a double play. Well, and part of the problem, too, is in situations like this, strikeouts or pop-ups, unproductive outs may not be double plays, but it's also not getting runs home from third. The 0-2 missed one and two now on Chance Ross. And Ross come through in a situation in which Nebraska could not convert in the top half of the inning. Bases loaded, one out. 
Crate with 11 hits, but just a 3-1 lead. And the 1-2. Swing and a miss. Ross offering weakly at that one. He goes down on strikes. Two gone and a huge second out for Bummer and the Huskers. Let's see as he throws him here. He got a good, sharp breaking ball that completely fooled Ross. You see him out on his front foot. That was the key at bat in this inning. Now you've got McEwen, who has really struggled at the plate. Big spot for him right here. Swing and a miss, and it's nothing and one. McEwen 0 for 3 tonight. He is against Nebraska 1 for 9 this year. The average 222 on the season. He's only driven in 13 all year. The 0 1. Lifted to right. That one dropping, and it'll drop in for a base hit. One run scores. Here comes a second run to the plate, and he is safe. And it's a 5-1 Creighton lead on the play. McEwen goes to second. A two-run single for Brad McEwen. And the Jays have a four-run advantage. Talk about lifting your teammates. Your run producer can't produce, but McEwen with the little pop-up down the first baseline. Two-run score and then on the throw home. As you see, it's just a little high. If the throw is accurate, it's got a chance, but not only was it high, but Burleson couldn't corral it. And because of that, McEwen gets to take second base. It's his first hit in two weeks for Brad McEwen. And the pitch upstairs for ball one to Nick Judkins, who's got a pair of hits tonight. And a base hit here by Judkins. Might be just about enough. Nice block by Burleson. And it's 2-0. Oh. Nebraska missed their opportunity in the sixth inning. Creighton did not. And the Jays play two and have a 5-1 lead. If you're a bummer, you haven't pitched that badly. No. Breaking ball in there for a strike, and it's 2-1. and one. Kind of a nickel-dime inning. Absolutely. The, the best hit ball was the single by Mike Gerber to lead off the frame. But the inning was turned completely upside down on the misplay on that attempted sacrifice. Chopper to short. Husker should be out of the inning. Christensen throws across in time, and Judkins is retired. But in the inning, two big runs score for the Jays on four hits. Creighton leaps two through six. 5-1. Creighton. Be with us this Friday for more NCAA baseball as the Huskers host the Minnesota Golden Gophers live from Hawks Field in Lincoln. It's an all-important Big Ten weekend for the Big Red. As the conference tournament looms closer, don't miss the Huskers and the Gophers this Friday night at 6.30 Central right here on NET1 and NET HD. With John Bishop and Larry Putney, I'm Kevin Kugler, Nebraska. Some disappointed faces in red tonight at TD Ameritrade. Their team down 5-1 as we start the seventh inning. And Pat Kelly takes... The first pitch for a strike from Chase Webb, who did a good job getting out of some trouble that he got himself into last inning. And Nebraska unable to hold the Jays down in the bottom half of the inning. A 5-1 lead now for Creighton. And 
Kelly a chopper up the middle backing up is Peter from the short grass in center makes the throw and pulled Judkins off the bag Kelly beats it out and he's aboard to start things off and Ed Service will argue the call of Mike Droll at first base well if there's one drawback to Nick Judkins is he's not your Darren Ruff type who is you know 6'2 6 6'3 6 and can stretch a long ways and only 5'8 it's harder for him to stretch, but Ed Service is saying, get some help from the home plate umpire. Let's see this again and see if the foot does indeed come off the bag. You watch the stretch. I don't know, Kevin. I mean, it, it definitely came off the bag, but you wonder, did it settle back on the bag? Hmm. It, it's it's it really, close. it does look very close. There's no question the foot came off the bag as he was receiving the throw, but then the heel came back down. The question is, did the heel have the bag when it came back down? We'll watch it again. Well, I think he's out. Yeah, he's out, Kevin, because you can see actually he is, he's right there, he's off, but watch, he is, he looks back on right there. Mm. And that is, that's the second time that the Jays have not gotten a break from Mike Droll, who was also the one who called the coach's interference. And Ed Service will not get the satisfactory explanation, so a break for Nebraska. We'll see if they can parlay that. That is a tough error, but you have to charge something, and the error is going to go on Jake Peter, just his fifth of the year. Well, like you said, a tough error, but somebody's got to get the error on right. that play. As Darby stands in, the first pitch swinging for strike one. So Nebraska trying to take advantage of what looked like a break. Darby, followed by Burleson, then back to the top of the order. And Kale Kaiser. Outside, one and one on Austin Darby. Terrific night. A little cool, but not so overwhelmingly cold here in Omaha that you've got to go with anything more than a light jacket. The 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss on the let-up pitch, and it's one and two. Darby getting that ball back out in front too far, maybe out on the front foot a little bit. The one, two. Chopper to the right side. Peter only play to first, and Darby is retired on the play. Kelly. Advancing into scoring position with one out. Too slow a ground ball to double up either Kelly or Darby, both of whom move very quickly. So it'll go as a fielder's choice, and Webb will now deal with one out and Burleson. Burleson singled and scored in the third, called out on strikes to end the fifth inning. Back to the left hand batter's box now. He had the single left handed in the third. The strikeout right-handed in the fifth. And the pitch outside for a ball, 1-0. The key right now, if you're Creighton, is you don't turn this, the unfortunate call that they feel they got, into something worse. Don't compound the problem. It's one of the hardest things for a pitcher to get used to. Peter, nice play at second. Throws to first, and Judkins with a good receive. Burleson out. Pat Kelly to third, but two gone now in the seventh inning. And Jake Peter showing that that error was not one he appreciates making a nice play there. Yeah, there's no question. He's a competitor, and he didn't he didn't like the fact that it was called. But again, something had to be called on that play. But Nebraska's been playing catch with him now. And you're one out away from getting out of this without a run scoring. Have to deal with Kaiser, however. Pitch outside for a ball. Kaiser tonight a single and three trips to the plate. Trying to play to run here and give Nebraska at least a little bit of hope. Offense, one of the best in the country, has been held in check tonight. Just one run on five hits for the 11th leading run scoring offense in college baseball. They average over seven runs a game. Darren Erstad's squad has not been able to get the offense on track tonight. 
Kaiser, a bouncer up the middle. Peter to his right, makes the glove stop, throws to first in time. Nice plays, everything to Peter, <laughs> including the error. And it's all Jake Peter in the seventh as we stretch in Omaha with Creighton leading by four. TD Ameritrade Park in Omaha, Nebraska. Creighton with a 5-1 lead as we move to the bottom of the seventh inning. Great to have you with us on a beautiful night for baseball in Omaha, Nebraska. Alongside John Bishop, I'm Kevin Kugler. And it's been all roses tonight for the Jays. They found offense early. They've had pitching to shut down Nebraska's offense. And the Jays trying to salvage the third game of the season series. You mentioned how Nebraska, with only five hits and a run tonight, the 13th best offensive team in the country by batting average you got the 287th rated team in college baseball the Creighton Blue Jays with 12 hits tonight they have to feel like they're uh, living high on the hog Tyler Niederklein now on the hill for the Huskers the junior out of Omaha making another appearance out of the pen trying to hold Creighton's offense in check here John but the two and two record and a 5.88 earned run average for Niederklein as he tries to Give the Huskers a shutout inning and get the offense back out there on the field. Tyler Niederklein. Veteran from Millard West, Jr. Has three career appearances against Creighton, including a start. A 1-0 record lifetime against the Blue Jays. Ben Boom, Staley, and Gerber. In the seventh inning as Ben Boom's down a strike after that fouled first offering. The 0 1. Low and away. 1 and 1 the count on Ben Boom, who had the RBI double to get things going for the Jays in that three run first inning. The 1 1. 2 and 1 now on Anthony Ben Boom. We've got some guys tonight who have not put up many multi hit games. Now, Judkins certainly has. He's got two hits tonight. Ben Boom with a line drive to right. Darby playing in. He's got to go back in a hurry, and he does to make the catch for the first out. Nice play by Darby. Got a good read on that ball, John, and was able to track it down. It hit pretty well. Got a fastball just above the knees, and he nearly golfed this one for extra bases. But we mentioned multi-hit games. Staley with two hits tonight. Gerber with two hits tonight. Scott Thornburg's first three-hit game of the season. First multi-hit game for Thornburg since early March and a strike to Alex Staley who's two for three tonight and all this production for Creighton the top two hitters Ross and McEwen in the order are a combined one for eight but that one hit by McEwen big difference in this game that two run single with two outs in the sixth inning big lift for Creighton because that makes the comeback trail for Nebraska that much harder. Tried to hold up, he could not. And it's one and two now on Alex Staley. Gerber to follow here in the Jays' seventh, leading five to one. And time is called. Niederklein banged up a little bit, limited in what he's able to do. We're not going to see much from Niederklein, an inning at most. 
which is too bad Nebraska could really use him in a variety of roles, especially on the weekend. Here's a guy who last year was 8-3 and three on, quite honestly, not a very good baseball team in a tougher conference, the Big 12, right. as a starter. The 2-2. Two -two. Looper to the left side, waiting on it is Christensen, going to have to hurry, not in time. It'll be an infield hit for Staley, his third hit tonight. And for the Jays, hit number 13. And the first three hit night for Alex Staley of the 2012 season. Had to wait back on it. Christensen got the ball off quickly, but not enough. Alex Staley last had a three hit game last April, April the, April the 2nd, 2011 against Portland. Line drive into right center field. That's a base hit. Sanguinetti cuts it off. Headed for third is Staley. And the Jays with runners at the corners. And only one out. Creighton trying to break it wide open in the bottom of the seventh inning. Gerber with his third hit of the night. Mike Gerber with that buggy whip swing of his. Laces another solid single. Niederklein finds himself in trouble. And 14 hits. Tonight, Creighton has not done this for over two months. They had a huge doubleheader. They scored 26 runs in a doubleheader. Played at home, but not in this ballpark. They played on campus because that was the same weekend of the NCAA tournament. Well, on those day, on that day, the wind was blowing out, and they had home runs. They had hits galore. A shift by Burleson to get the stop on the pitch in the dirt to Thornburg, who has had a huge night. Scott Thornburg, three for three, was ruled out from a coach's interference a little shove at first base reached in the sixth inning on a play that really could have been an error and the 1-0 is low ball 2 2 and 0 or a fielder's choice more likely in that sixth inning but instead was ruled an infield hit so three for three with three singles tonight for Scott Thornburg who will take it he came in hitting just 193 now they average up to 214. And as way out in front, 3-0 on Niederklein. Scott Thornburg has never had a four-hit game in his career. He's played all four years, came on, backup freshman catcher back in 2008. Three and one the count on Thornburg. Oscars are hoping to coax the ground ball out of Thornburg. You can turn two with Thornburg. He's hit into two this year. Not great speed. The 3-1. There goes the runner. Pitch is low. Ball four. And the bases are loaded for the second straight inning. And the Jays with a chance to really break it open with Jake Peter coming up. Be sure you're with us Thursday, May 17th. For our next great game as the Blue Jays host the Wichita State Shockers in the Missouri Valley Conference from right here at TD Ameritrade Park. It's the Jays and the Shockers right here on NET1 and NET HD. Well, we said at the beginning of the broadcast, Kevin, that for Nebraska, don't give up the free passes. Don't give out any gifts. Make the Jays earn it. That is the first free pass they have had tonight. They've done everything they had to do. They went out and earned it with 14 hits now. Their first walk. 14 hits, 13 singles. Yeah, it's been a punch and Judy type night. <laughs> There's no power, but that's the way this ballpark usually plays in. The 0 1. That's high for a ball, 1 and 1. Now, I do say that knowing that back in early April against Kansas, Creighton put up seven doubles in this ballpark. It's a pretty good doubles park. You get it down the line, it can carry them around in the corner or with, in, with outfielders kind of cheating in because of the conditions. Low two and one. Nice block again by Burleson, who's getting a workout this inning. You can hit a lot of gap doubles. It's also been a pretty good triples part because you get a lot of outfielders who like to cheat in because the ball doesn't carry that well. Well, if you get some of those hard line drives into the gap and outfielders who cheat in, it turns into a good triples park if you can hit it on a line to either of the left or right center gaps. The two one. Three and one now on Jake Peter. Tyler Niederklein really struggling here in the seventh inning. 
Remember, the only out in this inning was a ball well struck by Anthony Bemboom that took Darby almost to the warning track. The 3 1. Line drive to center field coming on is Sanguinetti. He'll play it on a hop and it gets past him. Staley will score. Gerber will score. Thornburg all the way from first. He's going to score. Peter clears him. Three run score and it's 8 1. Great. And all Darren Erstad can do is cross his arms and watch in disgust as Sanguinetti was kind of caught in between. He thought maybe he had a chance to make a heroic diving catch and then at the last moment pulls up. And because of that, the ball bounces over his glove and it turns into a three-run double. And a chopper off the bat of Murphy. Wide of first, the Jays just one hit away from their season high. That happened over at the CU Sports Complex in those North Dakota games that John was talking about two months ago. For Peter, that is his 10th double of the year, RBI 9, 10, and 11. And the Jays, offensive woes have ended against the Huskers. Nebraska had held Creighton to 9 of 60 at the plate coming into this game tonight. 15 hits tonight for the Blue Jays. Wow. Two and one on Brennan Murphy. And a lot of production from the back half of that Creighton order tonight as well, John. Really, it's been spaced out all the way around, save the top spot. Chance Ross has had a rough night. 11 of the 15 hits, Kevin, have come from Staley, fifth man in the order, to Murphy, nine. So 11 of the 15 hits coming five through nine. The 2-2 two -two to Murphy. Fouled away. And this is not what Darren Erstad wanted to see at all from his team tonight going into a critical series against a solid Minnesota team. Nebraska's beaten Minnesota once this year in what was a non-conference game. This Husker team reeling a bit right now. The 2-2. Lifted to center field. Sanguinetti underneath this one makes the catch. And Murphy becomes out number two in the seventh inning. This is a TD Ameritrade Park record. Granted, the ballpark is a year and a month old, but 15 hits. Most hits by any team in this park, and that, of course, includes all Creighton games played here and College World Series games and Missouri Valley Tournament games. And 13 of the 15 hits have been singles. Little chopper off the bat of Ross. Niederklein off the mound, throws to first, and the inning is over. But the three-run double by Jake Peter breaks it open. 8-1, Creighton. Through
the Ameritrade Park in Omaha, Nebraska, alongside John Bishop and Larry Putney. I'm Kevin Kugler. Five runs in the last two innings for the Jays have broken open a close game. Now Creighton with an 8-1 advantage at TD Ameritrade Park, and a good chunk of the crowd starting to, at least the ones in red, make their way to the exits at this point. But a terrific crowd tonight, 12,184, the second largest crowd in the nation this season, the third largest crowd in Creighton home history. And There'll be a lot of folks who will say, oh, I can remember back in the day when this was 20 or 25,000. Usually that's the old John Bishop doing that. Yeah, but right. this is still a very good crowd on a good night for baseball as we take a look at the new right-hander for the Creighton Blue Jays, Kurt Spomer on the hill. Former closer for the Jays. Fell out of that role after the first month of the season. He ended last season, last two months, as the premier closer in the Missouri Valley Conference. The one to Michael Pritchard, who has three of Nebraska's five base hits tonight. He tied Derek Ducart at 25 straight games with at least one hit. The hitting streak continues into the weekend. It's the third largest, the third longest rather, in history at Nebraska. He's still a ways to go, though. Still 13 games behind Francis Collins, who hit in 38 straight in 1996. And Pritchard slaps that one down the line. Fair ball. Extra bases for Michael Pritchard. He's got a four for four night, and he's at second with nobody out to start off the eighth inning. You talk about a hitting machine. He gets a high pitch, and you know, you watch him in the batter's box, and it's very reminiscent of Ichiro. The way he kind of comes out of there and kind of slaps at the ball, that's the way he's approached this game. And it's paid off for him. You're seeing a lot of Ichiro-style hits. The worst guys to emulate as a hitter. Absolutely. Especially a left-handed hitter. And Michael Pritchard, a four-for-four night tonight. Now hitting 380 in the hitting streak. And a pinch hitter, Kevin Blake Headley, who we saw in this ballpark last time, starting for Chad Christensen, will get a swing here. Pitch inside for ball one to Headley. We saw Headley the last time these two teams met. He started, his only started shortstop this year against the Jays. Had a two for four night, drove in a run. One and oh on Headley. And a pitch in there for a strike, one and one. So Christensen's night is done, 0 oh for two with a walk. Headley hitting 318 on the year. The freshman Millard South product and the ball gets away from Bemboom and Pritchard will advance to third. Would assume a pass ball off the glove of Anthony Bemboom to advance there. That'd be his seventh. Needs the Jays in that dubious category. So Pritchard's at third now. Nobody out in the eighth inning. Huskers know with a steep mountain to climb. And Headley down the left field line, curling, and that'll reach the seats. You never like to give up a run, but if you're Kurt Spomer right now, your concentration is solely on the batter. You don't worry about Pritchard. Jays obviously aren't going to play the infield in. They're not going to try to cut down the run at the plate. Five runs in the last two innings takes a little bit of the pressure off if you're Creighton. Yeah, just a little. An 8 1 lead. They've not played with too many big leads of late, really, at any point this season. And a swing and a miss. Headley out on strikes for the first out of the Huskers' eighth. And Spomer jammed him. You can see Headley having to shorten his stroke. And a catch up to that inside pitch. And a strikeout for Spomer. So here's Cash Kalkowski. He's been hit twice and grounded out. One gone, Pritchard at third. And the pitch outside for ball one. Spomer still really hasn't gotten his groove back since got some tendonitis issues during the offseason. Clayton coaches thought maybe he rushed back just a little too soon. And there's also been an issue at times he, he brings his arm down in his arm slot and it's, it's really kind of changed things up a little bit. And there have been times where he has looked like the Kurt Spomer of last year. 
Kalkowski lifts that one foul territory right side. Judkins, the first baseman there to make the catch for the second out. Pritchard holds at third on the foul out off the bat of Cash Kalkowski. So Spomer doing a nice job trying to wiggle out of trouble after that leadoff double by Pritchard. A little surprised that I didn't see Pritchard take off there trying to tag and score. I mean it was about halfway up the foul line between third base and the, where the stands end. We saw Nebraska being very aggressive in this series earlier on but down seven runs deciding better of it and of course Judkins did a nice job of running the ball back to the infield staring down Pritchard all the way to make sure he wasn't moving. The 0 one Sheffert tries the right field line he'll foul that away. Going to be a very interesting couple of days for Nebraska baseball. Creighton rolls into their weekend series feeling very confident. Nebraska goes into this Minnesota series feeling exactly the opposite. This coaching staff has got a little work to do to try to light the fire one more time against uh, under this Nebraska team, which is it just shows you how quick things can change in the game. Off the bat handle of Shepard as he tried to get out of the way, a little frustrated with that one as it fouls into the seats. You go from a 13-2 win in the first game of the series on Saturday, and you're looking good to win the series on the road, get yourself in position to make the conference tournament, and get swept in a doubleheader, losing a lead, a mid-innings lead in game one. And now you're facing an 8-1 deficit to your in-state rivals. You mentioned it. It's a huge series this weekend. We talked about it earlier. Nebraska really has to win four of these six conference games remaining in order to make the postseason tournament. The 0 2 Shefford reaches for it, lines it into the glove of Judkins at first, and the inning is over, so Spomer allows the leadoff double, but Pritchard is stranded at third. Bottom of the eighth, 8-1 eight Blue Jays. Kevin Kugler, John Bishop, Larry Putney, TD Ameritrade Park in Omaha. The Missouri Valley Conference standings. Jays are out of league this weekend. They play UNO tomorrow night. And then Dallas Baptist this weekend. They've got a game with Iowa next week before they wrap up their conference play with Wichita State. You'll see the first game of that series on NET. And then the Big Ten standings. That mess in the middle. Purdue's got the lead. They're going to win this conference in the regular season. But Indiana, Michigan State, Minnesota, Penn State, Ohio State, Nebraska, Illinois, all in that mix for those spots two through six. All within one game. It's a mess. <laughs> Absolute mess. And Luke Bublitz on the hill now for Nebraska trying to at least shut down the Jays in this eighth inning. The sophomore out of Thornton, Colorado. Going to face McEwen, Judkins, and Bembu. And the first pitch to Brad McEwen is high for ball one. Bublitz is 18th appearance of the year, a one and one record and a 5.85 earned run average. Lifted in the air, right side. Pat Kelly, the second baseman, he'll yield to Austin Darby, who makes the catch in shallow right for the first out. Jays have picked a good time to play their best baseball in a while because the team they will face this weekend, Dallas Baptist, 
probably going to be an NCAA regional team, 34 and 14 this year. Dallas Baptist has kind of had a working arrangement with a lot of the Valley teams. They've played just about every Valley team in three game series this week or this season. And they will come to Omaha this weekend. And that Dallas Baptist program as the first pitch in there for a strike to Nick Judkins got going under Nebraska's former pitching coach Eric Newman who was the head coach at Dallas Baptist and that program really started rolling several years ago chopper up the middle shortstop Headley who took over for Christensen at the plate last inning makes the play to first base and there's two away as we look ahead for the Jays at the upcoming schedule for Creighton and UNO, they got a little revenge game tomorrow against Bob Harold's squad. That's right. Mavs UNO. beat them earlier. UNO won their first in 10 against the Jays uh, a month ago. And we mentioned Dallas Baptist. They'll play a, an afternoon game on a Tuesday against Iowa, then close out, as we mentioned, NET will have the first game of that series. But it's that last line on the schedule that's pretty much the season for the Creighton Blue Jays, and that's the Valley Tournament down in Springfield. The last time it was in Springfield, though, Creighton took their first Mo Valley Tournament title in 2007. It was a day in which the Jays had to play early and then come back to play again late into the hours of the night to win that championship. It was late. Yes, it was. Bemboom a wave and a miss. Two and one now on Anthony Bemboom, who's one for four with the RBI double in the first inning. Andrew Small will go down in history on that fateful night in 2007. Yes, he will. The 2 1. Outside ball three. Three balls, one strike on Anthony Bemboom with two out in the eighth inning. And a line drive into right center field. That's going to split the gap and roll towards the wall. And it's going to roll for a while as Bemboom rounds second. He is on his way to third. Anthony Bemboom slides in with a two out triple. Kevin, we talked about this ballpark. If you can hit the ball on a line to the gaps, it's almost an automatic triple. Even if you're a catcher, but Ben Boom's got pretty decent wheels for a catcher. That ball will roll for a long way. And for Anthony Ben Boom, that will be his second triple of the year. And now Alex Staley at the plate. He's got three hits tonight, two runs scored, one run driven in, and Staley takes the first pitch from Bublitz low for ball one. Sixteen hits the Jays tying their season high. That they had against North Dakota. Earlier this year with that triple from Bembu. Staley takes strike one one and one the count on Alex Staley. Not mentioned tonight but Ed service in line for career win number five hundred tonight. 1-1, a little dribbler to the left side. Charging is Sheffert. Off-balance throw, got it. Nice play by Sheffert at third to get the speedy Staley scooting down the line to first. 8-1, great. We head to the ninth in Omaha.
one. The Jays with the lead over the Huskers as we head to the top of the ninth inning at TD Ameritrade Park alongside John Bishop. I'm Kevin Kugler. Nebraska about to lose their third straight game, and they've got a couple of tough ones to go with Minnesota this weekend at home, Wichita State, that first Minnesota series game, and the Wichita State game both on NAT. Then the trip to Michigan before they hope to go to Columbus for the Big Ten tournament. Got to be top six to get into that Big Ten tournament. Yeah, it's a different format than Nebraska has been used to in the past. In the old Big 12 when eight teams could get in as we take a look at Reese McGraw. This is the closer for the Jays. Not a safe situation though. This is unusual for Reese. For an opportunity to pitch in mop-up duty with your team up seven runs as Ty Kildow will get a chance to bat here in the ninth. Only his 21st at bat this year. Kildow hitting 153 for 20. Tough assignment, too, for Kildow, the sophomore, to come off the bench and face the deceptive Reese McGraw with that sidearm delivery, the 1 0. There's a strike, 1 and 1. McGraw enjoyed a great weekend. He earned two wins. In fact, the four wins he has this year is most for the Creighton Blue Jays. The 1 1. Kildow, bouncing ball to right for a base hit. So Ty Kildow, so much for that being a tough task. Uh, <laughs> Pinch hit single for Ty Kildow to start the ninth for the Huskers. Seventh hit. As we watch the pitch, and it stayed a little too much over the plate. I think Reese wanted that a little bit more inside. That's where he works best against righties. Works that inside corner, but caught too much of the plate. And Kildow with a leadoff single. Seventh hit for Nebraska. Pat Kelly looks at a pitch inside for a ball. Kelly tonight reached on an error in the seventh. He is 0 for 3 tonight. The 1 0. There's a strike. 1 and 1 to Pat Kelly. Killed out at first. Nobody out. Ninth inning. And a bouncing ball up the middle, and that'll get into center field for a base hit. First and second, nobody out. Back-to-back -back hits for the Huskers to start this ninth inning. And it looked like that ball accelerated as it bounced over the pitcher's mound. And it did. It was a, it was a snake burner until it hit the pitcher's mound. It was literally rolling up there, but then it hit the mound, and it took that wild hop up in the air and almost accelerated through the infield. So McGraw greeted very rudely here as Nebraska trying to make the miraculous seven run comeback. First time since the third that the Huskers have strung back to back hits together as Darby takes a strike. And it's nothing and one. Darby's had a rough night 0 for 3. Flat out to left struck out and grounded out. Darby, slow roller to short, might be two. Flip to second for one, on to first, double play. Darby hits into the 6-4-3 twin killing. Killed out a third, but now two gone in the ninth. And got the pitch he wanted. Jays haven't turned a double play in two weekends. And the bang, bang play at first. One out to go. Corey Burleson, the last hope for the Huskers. He'll bat from the left side, and the first pitch a strike. McGraw really whipping that one in there. A little extra momentum on that ball. Burleson down to 0-1. Swing and a miss, nothing in two on Corey Burleson. McGraw set and the 0-2. One and two now on Corey Burleson. Had some history made tonight in Major League Baseball, Kevin. Josh Hamilton, four home runs tonight for the Texas Rangers. One, two, popped up left side. That one is not going to be a Hamilton home run or a Burleson home run. Instead, it's a pop-up to short. And Ed Service wins career win number 500 as the Jays take care of the Huskers to salvage the third game of the season series by the final of 8-1. to one. Congratulations to Ed Service, win number 500.
28 year career started at St. Mary's has been here at Creighton as a head coach for the last eight years assistant under Jack Dom for three of the three of the 11 and congratulations to the Jays who get the win tonight and as you mentioned salvage the season series 8-1 Creighton with the victory more to come from TD Ameritrade Park in a moment. Fireworks going off to celebrate Ed Service's 500th career win. <laughs> All right, well, maybe not the 500th career win, but, you know, years from now when he tells the story, he'll say, yes, those went off for my 500th career win because the Jays beat the Huskers 8-1. Nebraska wins the season series, but the Jays prevent the first Husker sweep since 2008 with a dominant 8-1 performance. And now the Jays have won three in a row for the third time this year and a chance to get their longest winning streak of the season if they can beat UNO tomorrow. Yeah, it would be a tough task. UNO came in and played very aggressive against the Jays uh, about a month or so ago, but a team that's hitting 229 collectively, collecting 16 hits tonight, tying their season high. And, uh, you know, we talked about it in the beginning of the broadcast how Nebraska can't afford to be giving up free bases. Well, they didn't. They only walked one guy tonight. Creighton went out and earned it. And uh, Nebraska was unable to really get the, the kind of aggression on offense that they had shown in the first two games. They just never really had the opportunity. And Darren Erstad has got uh, some work to do, as you mentioned. Now three games in a row lost. Not the way you want to go heading into a huge weekend series, which will have the opener for you on NET coming up this Friday against the Golden Gophers. Now this is going to be a very interesting couple of days for Nebraska baseball, no doubt about that. Once again, our final score, Nebraska falls to Creighton tonight. The Jays win it 8 to 1 for John Bishop, Larry Putney, and the entire NAT Sports Production crew. I'm Kevin Kugler. Good night for TD Ameritrade Park in Omaha.